the Native American church, which uses peyote to come to terms with conflicting operating systems of the native religions and Christianity, spread very rapidly all through the West from Canada to Mexico. Formerly, there were only two tribes, the Huichol and the Tarahumare, who used peyote traditionally. When anthropologists studied the new rituals, they found that these people had symbolically combined the elements of both religions. When given psychological tests, the members of the Peyote Church were found to have the highest profile of psychological integration, except for the peoples far to the north, who had been almost untouched by the European invasion. In this example, we can see how the ritual journey that uses the symbols of the two religions had been transcended into a more universal vision. This enabled the cruelly subjected tribes to come to a higher understanding of the two traditions, one historical and native and the other externally imposed. They used the peyote sacrament to see above the trap of irrelevant forms and find the thread of spirit which flows through it all. For myself personally, I grew up in a scientific community. My father, an atomic scientist, was a chemist who worked in the Manhattan Project and the Chicago Project. Both of these endeavors were crucial to the development of the first atomic bombs. Ironically, these brilliant men were peaceful, gentle scientists who had all, were always ready to explain any question I had. I remember going through an old box of books during my teenage years and finding a book entitled Atomic Energy for Military Purposes by Smythe. Inside the cover was a note to my father which said, to Clarence, may we find the intelligence one day to find a peaceful use for this force. In this book, naively published for all to read in the libraries were all the procedures for refining uranium and building an atomic bomb. After many years, this book was surreptitiously removed from the library shelves, but the cat was out of the bag. Nevertheless, people were persecuted for entirely political reasons later on for the information released in this book. My father included. Perhaps for this reason, my father forbade me to follow in his footsteps, although I was very interested in chemistry and had some small aptitude in that direction. Little did I know that while all this was going on in one direction in the US, that another brilliant chemist in Switzerland, Albert Hoffman, was inventing the antidote for the unwise use of nuclear energy, LSD. My father was not just a city scientist. He was also a woodsman who taught me to love nature and live in harmony with it. My mother taught me only about one thing, love. She was pretty and mischievous and taught me how to cuddle. She also taught me how to wire and plumb and do all the maintenance necessary while growing up in an old farmhouse in the middle of Brooklyn, New York. She was always bringing in homeless people to cook them a meal and give them clothing. My mother was the envy of my friends because she allowed us to hold healing circles and take LSD in the attic where I had created a sacred space. Sometimes when we were making too much noise, she would come up in her bathrobe and her hair in curlers and plop herself down in the circle, much to the chagrin and dismay of my young friends. <laughs> then she would look at the most frightened of all of them and say with a mischievous glint, so, what's wrong with your eyes? <laughs> Knowing full well that we were all high on LSD. Then she would laugh and we'd all have a good chuckle. Although she never took LSD herself, she seemed to understand and appreciate what we were going through. As my interest in psychedelics deepened, I began to study anthropology and specialize in cultural revitalization movements, especially the peyote and mushroom cults. As the restrictions on the free sales of psychedelic chemicals hardened into severe laws, I began to use my intellectual inheritance to manufacture psychedelic sacraments. This allowed me to go deeper into the world of LSD. Eventually, I was taught the secrets of manufacturing high-purity LSD by Owsley and Tim Scully. When LSD is made in high-purity, 
a certain magic obtains for the person that journeys with preparation and intention. Purity of intention and purity of product go hand in hand to produce a transcendent trip. There are no guarantees which corridor will open for you, but the odds are better with intelligent choices. For the chemist also, the mere intention toward purity is transformative, a path unto itself. This is alchemy. So what is the genius of LSD? Is it only a magnifying intensifier? Is it only an accident of having a tiny dosage that made it convenient to manufacture and distribute? I don't think so. When I began to navigate psychospace with LSD, I realized that before we were conscious, seemingly self-propelling beings, many tapes and corridors had been created in our minds and reflexes which were not of our own making. These patterns and tapes laid down in our consciousness are walled off from each other. I see it as a vast labyrinth with high walls sealing off the many directives created by our personal history. Many of these directory, directives are contradictory. The coexistence of these contradictory programs is what we call inner conflict. This conflict causes us to constantly check ourselves while we are caught in the opposition of polarity. Another metaphor would be like a computer with many programs running simultaneously. The more programs that are running, the slower the computer functions. This is a problem then. With all the programs running that are demanded of our consciousness in this modern world, we have difficulty finding deep integration. To complicate matters, the programs are reinforced by fear. Fear separates, love integrates. We find ourselves drawn to love and unity, but afraid to make the leap. What I found to be the genius of LSD is that it really gets you high higher than the programs, higher than the walls that mask and blind one to the energy-destroying presence of many contradictory but hidden programs. When LSD is used intentionally, it enables you to see all the tracks laid down and explore each one intensely. It also allows you to see the many parallel and redundant programs as well as the contradictory ones. It allows you to see the underlying unity of all opposites in the magic play of existence. This allows you to edit these programs and recreate superior programs which give you the insight to shake loose the restrictions and conflicts programmed into each one of us by our parents, our religions, our early education, and by society as a whole. We have reached the carrying capacity of our planet, probably overreached it, and we need to see this in time. And it is our conflicted conditioning which supports the self-destructive cycle. We need all the help we can get to see through the veils, which until this time have helped our species to survive. It is time to become conscious, and existence has given us this valuable tool, LSD, to start this process. I pray that we have the time and courage to make this next leap in evolution. I believe that LSD is one of the gifts given to us by spirit to do this. Thank you.